YouTube channel, also BeadShop.com, and right here on our Facebook page. So it's great to have all of you guys with us. I am going to um, make sure that I can see all of you all. I'm going to holler out to Karen. Karen, how we doing? We're good. All right. We are good to go. I'm going to pull all of this stuff up on my many, there we go, on my many social media devices here. So let me make sure I can see you guys. And I think I can. I can also hear myself. So let me go ahead and mute that. Great. I can see everybody there. I'm also going to pull up our YouTube channel right over here. Let me get myself a little more in frame so I can see you guys. I'll get my computer a little bit closer to me so I can see who's up and running over there. Thank you so much for joining me on this Friday. We are going to have some fun times today. I've got some fun things um, scheduled, lined up, ready for you guys to do. Um, it's going to be good times, I think. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Let me get over here, though, and make sure I can see. Yes, live now. I can see it. Let me put that on mute so I can see all of y'all. And there you are. All right. I can see you guys on the YouTube as well. So we're all set and ready to go. Okay. So, you guys, uh, I have two things that I want to go over. Um, first of all, a big shout out and thank you to Drea. She is on and moderating as beadshop.com. Thank you so much. Drea for all you, I mean Drea, Gita, you and Drea kind of switch places in my mind, so uh, it's a good thing. Um, thank you so much for um, doing all that wonderful linking and everything as well. Um, I really, really, we really appreciate that, and I know everybody who tries to find things about projects appreciates that as well. So uh, Janice is also on. I saw Janice jump on as well. So good morning, Janice, or good afternoon for you on the East Coast. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know, if you are followers of our bead shop community on Facebook, uh, it's called The Bead Table, and I know a lot of you uh, are members there already. But if you aren't, you can jump over after this broadcast and um, answer just a couple of little questions, and we'll be glad to have you. It's great. We're almost 4,000 members strong. And I wanted to say that it is our one-year bead anniversary of the bead table, um, our Facebook community, which is really amazing. In this year, we've grown to almost 4,000 members from all over the globe, from locally here to the Bay Area, all the way across the map, which is amazing. I'm really very gratified, and I know that all of us here at Bead Shop are super stoked that people all around the world can get together and bead and create. Um, so it's really, really great. It's great that we um, that we can all come together and be creative. So I wanted to give a big shout out for all of you guys, um, and we really, really thank you for all of your support. Um, I also wanted to um, let everybody know that uh, we do have some terrific um, sales and offers going on this weekend through our newsletter. So if you haven't joined in on our newsletter, that's the way that we keep um, best contact with you guys. You go right over to our website, beadshop.com, find the newsletter box, and pop in your email, and uh, we'll be in touch. Um, don't worry, all of that info stays private. We keep it just for us. So, But that's the best place to get deals and offers. And we've got a lot of great stuff coming up this month of November um, because it's heavy bead making time right now. So we really um, would, it would be great for you guys to jump over and do that if you haven't already. I see a lot of great well wishers uh, and well wishes from all over. So thank you so much for that. Um, it's great to have all of you all here on. Um, we had a couple of questions. I know that it's made national news here in California. It is a wildfire time for us for sure. The rains don't really start probably maybe even till December here in California. So 
we've got some wildfires going on to the north of us and to the south of us. Um, but everyone we know is okay. Um, Emily, who uh, has been um, had some wildfire issues even this summer, um, is well out of the way of those. So everyone's safe. It's super smoky here today. Um, it's crazy. Um, it looks like it's kind of, uh, you know, heavy, heavy uh, smoke from all the fires. So um, it's been kind of a kind of a crazy day, but hopefully we'll get everything. Those will all get under control and um, we'll, they'll have that situation well in hand soon. Um, I also had a comment um, about my earrings. You know, very good eyes on these earrings. I'll kind of lean in so you can see them. Um, this is an earring design that I did, oh, I don't know, probably, I was talking with Cara about it, it's probably 20 years old, right? Um, these are a, a fun wire armature. I'll take it off and hold it up so you guys can maybe see it a little bit closer. Um, these I made, I don't know, right over the counter at the bead shop a million years ago when we had our brick and mortar store. But you can see it's an armature that I've made, it's just 18 gauge. Uh, the armature is made from, and then there's some chain going along the bottom. We'll get them up a little bit there so you can see them a little. There we go. That looks a little bit better. There we go. I'm trying to see it in the screen. Um, but it's just some little beads and some wire wraps, so I think this might be kind of fun maybe to do um, for a Facebook Live. Yep, tiny briolettes that I had out of my stash, but you know what? Our drops would work. We have some great briolettes and stuff, so it's just a simple kind of a simple armature that's going on there. So thanks for that. Um, thanks for those, uh, the sharp eyes on those. They're some of my favorite earrings, so indeed. All right, well, let's get this show on the road. Okay, I'm going to turn this camera around, and you're going to see what I see. We're going to talk about two things today. We're going to talk about... Um, um, the monthly mix, and I've got some monthly mix projects I want to go over with you, and then I have a brand new knot for you, and you're going to go crazy. You're going to go crazy over this knot, I think. I hope, anyway. So let's get this camera turned around, so let me stand up, get this going here, so you guys uh, get a good bird's eye view about what's happening. Whoops, actually, let me swing this around a little bit, so bear with me here just a moment because I'm my own camera woman on Fridays, so we've got to kind of get it going on. But look at that knot. You guys can see it already right there in front of me. All right, looks good. Um, let's see, any other questions we've got going on over here? Um, and I'll get the, uh, the, the script box moved as well. We like to have it up at the beginning, but I know sometimes that gets in the way, so I'll take that one down as well. So just bear with me here as I move things around, okay? So let's see, that's a pretty good view, I think. I'm also going to try and make it a little bit brighter in here, um, so we can all... There we go. That Whoops, that's a little too bright, isn't it? There we go. We don't need that much sunlight because it's a little difficult to see. There we go. Sorry about that. That, I think, works just fine. Okay, so now that I'm getting situated, again, thanks for hanging in there with me on that, but let's get this show literally on the road. Let me see if I can get rid of, I'm going to get rid of that guy. There we go. Oops. And there we go. Okay. So I think that's, I think we're clear. I think we've got a clear screen and we're ready to go. Now, just as a reminder, you guys, you can find everything that I am using in today's project, of course, on our website at beadshop.com. I'm going to put this stuff here over in the corner for the moment that make a little pile over there. And I'm going to bring your friend and mine the monthly mix right on in here. Now, the monthly mix, this month, it's called Cornucopia, okay? And we love the Cornucopia mix. You know, we kind of did it here as a group um, at Bead Shop. Everybody had a little, um, I don't know, a little input uh, about how to do it. Um, 
And so it was kind of a fun group effort, I think. Um, so I'm going to open up the cornucopia so you guys can see it a little bit closer. What I love about this mix, you guys, is that it has, not unlike Janice's, um, uh, not unlike Janice's uh, family reunion mix, there's also some cubes in it as well. So let me get really tight in here so you guys can see this. Look, whoops, you can't see it at all. I'm totally off camera. There we go. All right, I'm going to get it a little bit closer. Yes, even Alfie, someone asked Melanie, even Alfie, did he have a hand in it, a paw in it? Of course he did. Everything we do always has a little bit of Alfred. But this is, um, this is the, uh, the cornucopia for November. And we really, really love this one. And I thought it might be fun to um, to pull forward some monthly mix projects from Free Tips Friday's past, okay? Um, because this one really, I think, has um, a lot of great potential, a lot of great design potential um, for it. So. Uh, let me throw the monthly mix over there, and let me pull in. We still have, you know, the monthly mix is a limited edition. We only make a certain amount of them. We do, however, have a few left from um, July and August. This is the family reunion mix that Janice did, and this is the summer sunset that um, Cara did. And our friend at the bead table... Um, uh, Allie Mori. Allie has been challenging herself every month to do kind of a fun, wonderful wrap bracelet with the monthly mixes. Um, so they're really interesting. You can search the photos or you can also go to the bead table and search Allie Mori um, and those will come up. Um, they're really, really uh, very inspiring. One of the monthly mix, I used Family Reunion in this um, memory wire bracelet here. And as we inch closer and closer to the fall and winter holidays, you know, we get closer and closer to gift giving time and we need some fast gifts. Memory wire, nothing is faster than memory wire, I think. It's really super easy and fast to string. And this was a free tip Friday I did a while back. Um, this is also under our memory wire bracelet on, um, on the website as well. And I mixed macrame. This is 0.5 millimeter leather. And I mixed some metal beads and strung that family reunion mix in there. So this is a really good one. So if you haven't played around with memory wire and the monthly mix, it's a good one to play with. Okay, so that's this guy. I also, way back, this was the strawberry lemonade mix from, I don't know, I think last summer. Um, summer 2017, I think. So it might have been a year ago summer. Um, and this also involves a lot of chords. It's done kind of in the style of our, um, what is it, Odyssey project that we did. But you can see, and I'm going to get really tight in here so you can see the different chords. I used, again, some thin leather. I think this is also 0.5 millimeter. I used 0.4 millimeter Chinese knotting cord. I used some wax linen here, and then I used some regular Ceylon. And all of this, the end was treated just like I did uh, in Odyssey, our Odyssey project. Okay. And um, the Odyssey is here. Uh, the Odyssey is a really, that closure is here rather. The Odyssey is a really great way to utilize cords. So that's this one here. Okay. And then I just did some knotting and stuff. So this is a great way to use the monthly mix as well. And if you love the monthly mix and we've already run out of it, you can go to our website right on the monthly mix page and you can see uh, everything we used in them. So you can make, make up your own as well. Okay, so that's this one here. I also wanted to show you another couple of real quick ones with this. This was the monthly mix. This was Karen's. That was a really, I think this was Karen's. Um, 
it wasn't the Alfie mix, so it might have been a mix from Karen from before. I can't remember actually which one this was. I'm going to have to check and see which one. But um, I used the um, Softflex. This is the copper Softflex, the .014. And then I crimped and used the crimp covers. And it's kind of a fun, just really simple um, necklace that I kind of call these like little pods um, that are strung. And it's three strands of that Softflex, one, two, three coming together and crimped and then just strung all the way up like that. You could also do this one like this. This is just a single strand that has, maybe this was, Karen, do you remember which mix this was? This was yours, wasn't it? Sweet pea? Sweet pea, that's what it was. Yeah. Sweet pea, it was so good. Yeah, everyone's chiming in, it's sweet pea, it's sweet pea. It was such a good one. Um, and again, I just did a little float, just strung some on. This is a, now a one millimeter um, crimp tube there and then to make it adjustable I just used a little lobster clasp and some of our circle back chain to um, to make the closure so it's very super easy um, no no Janice I'm saying we've run out of these other monthly mixes we've got plenty of the cornucopia so you may have just misheard that we've got plenty but it's these older ones some of them that we have run out of so don't worry we've got plenty of the cornucopia for you guys um, to work with but again if we have some of our old mixes that we've run out of we do have the recipes on them okay then this one uh, this might have been our maybe our February mix I can't remember which one this was either <laughs> because we have so many but this guy also again strung on softflex this is the gold softflex extreme and the seed beads just float on there and you can see it's in our oval crimp again some circle back chain to make this adjustable so it makes it really easy um, to put together and the question do you have that question are those crimp covers they are indeed let me get in real close so you can see that there, okay? And if you search, if you go to our blog, the bead table, um, the bead table blog for many of these, I have uh, written blog posts for them. So you can, uh, you can find more steps um, on all of these, but they're super easy to do. And you can um, also find them on our website under a free tip Friday, um, all of the videos are listed there. And yeah, I thought that this guy here was the February, um, the February mix. Um, I think that was it. So we've got so many monthly mixes. We've got a great one coming out for December. That's going to be really exciting when we, when you guys see that. So we've got a whole bunch of good mixes coming up. And um, you don't need to sign up for the monthly mix. You just uh, we release them at the beginning of the month, every month. They release around the first of the month or so, um, and then they go until they're sold out. And again, you can find them just on um, our monthly mix page, our CB page, right on beadshop.com. You know what? I'm not going to try and put these back in right now. I'm going to do it right after um, the broadcast so I don't get beads all over the place. I think that's prudent, isn't it? Uh, okay, so yes, that one was called New Love. That is correct, the New Love Mix. All right, let me bring all of this stuff in and show you what I've got in a pile here because we've talked about monthly mix, and I have promised you a new knot, right? So let me make this a little prettier so it's not such a big old a big old mess here. All right, let me get this guy. Uh, and so those of you who are with me last week uh, know that I had a special guest. I had my mom on with me. And we worked on the Nomad bracelet, which I thought was so fun. Um, it was a Karen um, creation, uh, that Nomad bracelet, and we just loved it. Um, and it was really fun, I think, having my mom kind of create some riffs on it as well. But I was really digging how we were using the surf record, and I thought, you know what? I want to keep going on surf record because the surf record, um, I think, is um, really easy and fun um, and simple 
um, to work with as well. So, and sometimes I think it doesn't get all the love that it should get. So that's why this project is perfect for Surfer Gourd. Um, and I did want to mention, um, you guys, and Janice just mentioned it um, on the feed here on Facebook Live. Um, the cornucopia, you know, you remember for the Alfie mix that we did, we donated a um, dollar of each tube went to um, our local pets in need. Well, this for this monthly mix, Cornucopia, we're donating $3 of each tube that we sell. We're donating it uh, this month to the Second Harvest Food Bank. So it's a good way, especially in this time where many of us have such abundance and some of us um, are not as abundant, um, we want to share, uh, share in that. So the Cornucopia mix... $3 of each tube um, is the sale price of each tube is going to go to Second Harvest. And we'll give you, um, we'll give you an update um, after the month is over so you can know um, uh, how much uh, got to be donated. Um, I'm going to fix the, the light that's coming across because it's a little distracting there. So bear with me here just a second. Let me do that. And then we're going to look close up on this knot that I've gotten on here, okay? So this knot is called, whoops, sorry, I hit the camera here. This knot is called the chain knot, right? Let me get a little closer so you guys can see it. And it might look complicated or complex, but you guys, this could not be easier. You know, around also this time of year, we need fast projects. We need fast projects um, to create, and this one could not be faster. And it's a great bracelet, I think, for both men and women. You could also make this as a um, as a necklace and throw some really cool vintage finds or something on here. And I thought that this would be perfect for Green Girl. I have the Green Girl Feather Charm, but we have so many different charms from Green Girl that's right up here. And then this is the Snake Button, which I also love. And on the back of this feather, it says, To Thine Own Self Be True, which I love that sentiment, so it's great. So I'm going to show you how I start this piece, and then um, then we're just going to get into it. So uh, the... the surfer cord that I used here, this is the smoke gray surfer cord, which I love it. It's the two millimeter um, uh, surfer cord, so it's the thicker one. Though you can also use the thinner one and make a thinner cord, right? So either way, but I'm using the two millimeter today, okay? So that's this one here. So I chose for the demo, this is the smoke this one is the seaweed. I love the seaweed. Um, I think it's a really beautiful color. Um, and it, I don't know, it's festive, right? Very festive and green. Alrighty. So I'm going to start by reeling off about two yards for this, about two yards for a bracelet. Um, the surfer cord has a lot in the package, so you'll have plenty to work with. Okay. So I'm going to reel off that two yards, clip it, and I'm going to do my little trick with surfer cord, and you saw me do that last week as well when we had the Nomad bracelet. I'm just going to put my little ends there. I'm going to get my zap glue, and I'm going to put a little bit of zap right onto my plastic baggie. Okay, and we're going to make some little um, needles on the end, right? And so the way I do that is I come in and I just lay my surfer cord across the zap. Come on there, there we go. And I just get that zap right into the cord. Okay, and then I kind of squeegee it off. Oh, sorry, 1.5 millimeter, Gita. I'm sorry, it's not two millimeter. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess my head is in leather mode, not surf record mode. It is the 1.5 millimeter, not two, point, uh, not two millimeter. Sorry about that. 1.5, we carried in one and 1.5. We've got so many cords, sometimes I can't keep them all straight, right? 
I'm going to do the same thing with the end of this gray thread that I had here because I didn't quite <coughs> get it um, get it hardened at the end. So let me do that one as well. Okay. And then I'm going to just get that zap. And I use zap because it dries so super quickly. It sets real, real, real quick. Okay. So after I get this one on there, I'll go back to the green ones. And let's see what we've got here. I'm also going to squeegee this out just a little bit to make sure that any of the rest of the residue is coming off here. Sorry, the louvers are moving a little bit, but the, the sunlight will go away in just a second there. Sorry about that. People are rushing around, filling orders, even as I do Free Tip Friday. Okay. So you can see now it's it's done. It's just um, you know, nice and, and, and set here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my, um, my thread snips and I'm going to give myself a nice angle cut there. Angle cut there. Make it a little tighter so you can see it. And this one there, angle cut it right there. Bam. Done and done. There's a little extra, there's a little extra glue on here, so I'm going to squeegee again, squeegee that off with the plastic baggie. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying this, Jeannie. Thank you for the nice compliment. That was very nice of you to say. Um, I do enjoy teaching, and it is fun. It is fun to do, but I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to come in and clip that other end off as well. Okay, so that's it. Alrighty. So let me fix those louvers again um, because the sunlight is coming in. Sorry about that. The sun and everything is kind of goofy today because of all the smoke. So sorry about that again. All right. So we're all fit. We're all set. Um, so now that I have my ends ready to go, okay. Let me come in and start the piece. Let me get this out of the way. So to begin, it couldn't be easier. I'm going to get my button, and I've got another bunch of Green Girl stuff here. I've got the, what we call the Fairy Realm um, charm. And then we've got this Rose button. Both of those, I think, look really, really nice with this. <coughs> and um, I just love this Fairy one. Have you seen the back? Look, it's like a little precious leaf. So, so cute. I just love it. Um, so we're going to start by just threading the cord. And see how now it makes just a nice, really stiff needle there. So I'm going to thread the cord through. Just like that. And there we have it. Done and done. The button's on. Now I'm going to get, you guys know, these are our transitions, um, and transitions we use a lot for um, crimping, like in our Tahoe. Whoops, come back here. Like in our Tahoe piece. So I slide that through, slide it on down. And slide that up. Okay. And then I come in and I'm going to crimp it. Okay, and that's going to hold everything together. Okay, there, and I'm going to flip it and do that there. And then I want to make sure I've, I do have some air. I don't want to crimp it so tight that the cord doesn't have movement here. Okay, so we just want to make sure that we've got a little bit of movement. All right, now I'm going to get in real tight so you guys can see this. Super easy to get started. What you're going to do is, I'm going to take the left hand cord and I'm going to make a loop. Can you see that? And the loop isn't crossed. And that's something you really want to remember. You never cross your cords right here. Okay. Then we're going to come around that loop with the right cord and I'm going to make another loop right next to it. 
So see that? I've got this loop, the loop coming around, and then another loop here. Now this loop that I've just made heads through the other loop and I tighten it down. Okay. Now this first connection might be just slightly awkward and see how it's kind of tall up here? So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it tight up against this button. So I make my loop. I want it nice and tight. Let me move this a little bit there. Okay. Come around that loop with the other cord. Make a second loop and head that loop through the first loop. You can see that there. Now with the tail of that first loop, I'm going to tighten everything down. So you kind of have to one by one, you kind of have to kind of move the cords a, just a little bit to take up all that slack. And it feels a little awkward just until you get everything done. And see that here? I'm going to get it nice and tight. So it looks a little, um, you can see that loop that you've put this loop through, as you pull it down to tighten, it, it um, captures this second loop that you've made. Okay, And I want to get even a little bit tighter, so I'm just going to draw all of this cord up. Kind of like when you're making that Chinese button knot, if you made that along with me. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit tighter. You don't want to over tighten because then it's going to look a little funny. Okay, so there it is. So that's our first step. Now, once you've achieved this, okay, with the loop, wrap around the back and make a second loop with the second cord. Okay. And if it's not quite right or whatever, you just kind of pull it apart and you try it again. All right. So now, once you have this loop, we're going to just do, it's kind of a loop and loop, um, almost like a loop and loop braid, practically. Okay. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to get, again, this left cord, and I'm going to make a loop, not crossing the loop, and just head it through that loop up top and pull that down. Okay, I'm going to make sure that my threads aren't twisting. Okay, so now with this, the other cord, I form a loop. I kind of, you know, pinch, don't cross, head it through the loop, still side by side, pull the other loop down. So essentially, you're just looping back and forth, make this loop, head it through this loop, and tighten. And see when I tighten, it pinches that loop in and holds everything tight. Okay. So now I go with this one. Make the loop, pinch, don't twist. So it's kind of like an open loop at the bottom. Can you see that? Goes through. And then we tighten. And if you can see this braid, see how it's coming up to be a nice flat kind of knot. Get a little bit bigger here. So now one of the things that I've noticed that you, it's an easy way to screw up is like if you set this down and then you come back and you go, oh, which one do I make a loop with? I can kind of pull on this cord. If this cord moves this loop, it means I'm not making my loop with this cord. I make the loop with this cord. So make it here, send it through, and again, see how it's laying flat underneath there. Okay. Kind of pull and tighten both ones. And you just want to have your tension be pretty even. I'm going to start going a little bit faster here because we want to get a little, we want to get towards the middle. But see how, let me get super tight so you can see. See how that loop is cinched by the second loop 
that it's gone through. Okay, right there, so tighten. Get that loop, send it through, and tighten, tighten around it. And just even everything out. And if you screw up and you're like, oh, this is weird, or if you're like twisting your cords, if you twist the cords, the braid isn't going to be very flat. All you do is just pull the threads and it will uh, unravel very, very easily. So you don't have to, you know, unknot it or anything. You just unravel it by pulling the cords. Okay, so there's that one. The only thing that you have to remember is which knot or which side of the cord you make your loop on. Again, if you can move this loop, that means you don't loop with this cord. You loop with the opposite cord. Pinch, do not twist. And I'm working kind of small. I, I want to try and keep control over what I'm doing with these cords, right? So if I make a, a loop, what you could do though is, and I was doing this a little bit, I have my loop here. I could also come in grab the other cord like that to make the loop and then tighten it down. That's another method I was kind of playing around with. You work a little bit bigger that way. You come in and grab and pull and tighten. So that also works. Your cords want to twist a little bit more with that method, but you know what I say, you're the boss, so you do this. All right, put that through. Don't twist, do not twist, and tighten. I know, right? This is so easy. I can't wait to see what you create with this. So see again, if you were, see here, see how I, I can't pull this? I use the wrong cord for the loop. That is not the cord to loop. This is the cord to loop. There you go. Karen was asking me earlier, she was really loving this a lot, um, and she was asking if she could do this with two colors, and I think you can. You would just crimp two different um, strands here at the bottom, right, two different um, cords at the bottom here, and you could probably do it that way. And it is surfer cord, Carol, it's the 1.5 millimeter surfer cord. So I'm going to show you here how I would add the charm, and you're going to laugh to see how simple adding the charm is to this piece. I'm going to come in, and for this one, this gray one that I have here, I measured so that the charm would come about halfway into the piece like this. But you could add your charm anywhere. It could be like closer to the button. That would look nice too, right? So I'm gonna add this charm right here, all right? And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna add my charm on just like that. And I want to make sure that it's actually, I think I want it to be facing the other way here. There we go. Like that. There we are. Now I just pretend that that charm isn't there. I go through the loop, side by side, and tighten. And see how, see how the charm sits in that little bottom loop, right? That's it. Yeah, you guys are, are uh, mentioning the gum wrapper chains. I remember doing those as well. It's a little bit, I think it's a little bit of a different, um, a different process than this, um, but it, you created a weave that looks, that looked very, very similar. I'm just gonna tighten that up, there we go. And whoops, I actually, this didn't come out on the correct side here. I want to make sure that, see how, and this is a good mistake to show you. See how when I created the loop here, see how my strand, 
came to the inside, that is incorrect. You've got to have your strand, your open thread, come to the outside here, okay? Because if it doesn't come on the outside, it's not lined up correctly for your next knot. So don't go on the inside, go on the outside like this. Pull this through and then tighten. I knew something was off. There we go. Now that looks right. There we go. So now see this cord, it was on this side of the loop, but now it's in the correct position. Bring it through and tighten. And then you just keep going. You just pretend that that little, that little charm just isn't even there. This would look great, I think, also in leather, in the two millimeter leather. I think it would look really nice. A little bit wider of a of a weave of a knot length right so here's this guy right here look at how nice that's looking I think it looks pretty good I'm going to switch this one out so I can continue with this one and I want to show you how we're going to end it um, because I've shown you how to begin it but we've got to end it as well there we go, don't twist over. And these different surfer cords, like that um, seaweed one I was using, feels kind of a, a little stiffer to me. I don't know if you guys who have been using the surfer cords, um, some of them have a little, have a little more body um, than others. But I really like the color of this smoke gray a lot. And you get into a rhythm here, so it actually goes pretty darn quickly. So if you have to knock out a few um, presents, this is a good one. I'm also really trying to adjust to make sure that I'm not pulling too tightly. Um, the, the tension is really key with this one. And yeah, Dale, I agree. It's probably the die or the finish. The surfer cord in um, seaweed has a slight um, metallic-y kind of feel to it. So I think you're right. I think that the die has a little bit to do with um, the outcome of how stiff the cord is. But they all work. You could even do this with Chinese knotting cord, right? The especially the 0.8 millimeter. I think that the braids would look different depending on what cords you used, so you can just kind of experiment. Again, if you are looking at something, you know, as you're doing this knot and you look back and your braid isn't quite, or your knots aren't quite sitting as, as nicely as you want them to, you really need to remember that when you create that loop, you don't twist it like this. You want to just lay it side by side. That um, twisting makes your um, looping cord end up in the wrong position. There you go. Back and forth. I think we're, we're getting close there, so bear with me here as I get to the right length. This is also kind of, Karen was also noticing as she was playing with this when I was creating this sample. Um, that this is a little bit of a stretchy knot, and it is. You can see here when I pull it, it has a little um, has a little bit of stretch to it, which I also like. Yeah, I can see you guys are getting a whole bunch of ideas, which I love. I love that part. Yes. And remember, when you do create these, I want to see the samples that you've made over at the bead table on our website. I'd love to see it. There we go. Tighten that guy up. And again, just a little bit of adjustment, um, and that will um, keep everything, all the tension, nice and even. That tension isn't even. There we go. I like the looks of that a little bit better. And I like the looks of that one a little bit better. There we go. And if it's funny, like I feel like, there we go. 
that's a little bit better. If it's not quite quite right, again, you can just take this, see how it easily, just easily comes out. And see how this loop, I knew something was a little weird. It was twisted a little bit, so my braid wasn't looking quite right. So here's this, this way, and side by side. There we go. That's what I want it to look like. Side by side and through. Okay. Yeah, rat tail would work for this, for sure. Um, it's that silky um, Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese knotting cord. And, Faye, you could use the two colors. You would just, I would probably just um, maybe loop them, or maybe I'd silk wrap instead. Maybe I'd bring it through the button and silk wrap them all together and then clip the other ones away so you have a longer or short tail or maybe macrame. Um, you know, do a macrame closure like we do on so many um, to get those two together. Those would work. That would work. I have a little bit of experimentation. Sorry, I'm out of view here. Sorry about that, you guys. Alrighty, let me measure this around my wrist and see if I'm close at all to that. Okay, because I don't want to make it too big. I have just a couple more knots. We're looking close. I'm going to say maybe, I don't know, three more maybe. Let's see what three looks like. This guy in through. And tighten it down. Don't twist. Don't twist. Yeah, we also do have that variegated, what we call our gypsy leather, would be really cool with this. Um, I'm going to have to experiment making one with leather. Um, I think it would look nice. And the gypsy leather is does have that variegated color to it. And again, I cut about two yards for this bracelet, um, and it looks like it's about the right length. You want to have a little bit extra because tying knots like this with tiny little ends of threads can just be um, can just be really irritating. There we go. Get in there. Tighten that up. Sorry about that. Come on, it's the last knots in my hands all of a sudden are kind of fumbling around with this. Come on now, there we go. <clears throat> and let me tighten this one down. There we go. Alrighty. So let's see if this is close. Bring it around. I think this looks about right. You see that? It's almost there. So now what I'm going to do is, to close this, I'm just going to pull the leather out so that it ends just like this. Okay, so it can't come un, um, unwoven. Then I'm going to get my transition bead. And I'm going to put that transition on the end. You could also, if you wanted, let me show you this and then I'll show you something else here. Uh, you could just put this transition through like this. And I kind of give, this is where I give it a little bit of a twist underneath, so it kind of evens everything out. And then you just close off with that transition right there by crimping it. You could also, though, very easily just tie these cords together in a knot like that. Tightening everything down like so. Not too tight. That might have been a little too tight. There we go, because you want to keep these ending knots looking nice. There we go. And then you can tie another knot or do another transition or do macrame or however you want to close it off. Like so. Just make sure you have enough room for that button to 
scoot in and out. Again, try not to twist the cords when you tie this knot at the end. Before I super tighten it, I want to make sure that I do it this way. Yep, that fits perfectly, so I'll tighten it down a little bit. There's a question over on YouTube, can we use compassion suede? You know, I haven't used compassion suede on this, but I don't know. I, compassion suede is pretty sturdy. Um, so I bet you could. I, will, I would have to give it a try. If you have some, there's no harm in trying it, that's for sure. I'm going to give two little knots here at the end. You could knot some beads on at the end or close it off however you wanted to. Put a little bit of glue at the end so it wouldn't, um, so it wouldn't unravel. And now I'm just going to come in and clip it off. Let me get that one a little bit tighter. There we are. Look at that. Okay. And then, and if you haven't gotten to see all of this broadcast, it's no big deal. You guys can always watch it on the replay. No trouble. And so look at what I've got here. I've got my nice snake button here at the end with the buttonhole. And I've got that nice charm right here on the piece. So let's see how it looks. I'm going to add it to my stack on my wrist. Let's see. With this beautiful green girl button, I loved the coiled snake. I think it's good. All right, there it is. That one's on. And this is on. Look at how great I think that looks added to the stack. Fantastic. And you can see here, I would just continue to move on with this little fairy realm one as well. So I hope you guys dug that. I hope you liked it. I think it was kind of a fun, fast, really easy, um, easy piece to do. So again, you can find all of this stuff, you guys, right on our website, right at beadshop.com. And um, the cords are just really, I think, a fun way to work with this. And I would go ahead and I would go for it. I would try it in Chinese knotting cord. I would try it in the smaller um, surfer cord. I'd try it in leather. Um, I think that you'll be very successful with all of those. Alrighty, well let me um, change out the, uh, the camera, move it around so I can uh, see you guys here. Um, let me make sure, nope, let me see here, nope, let me try it here. Yes, there we are, I think I've got it back in the corner. At least I hope so. Yes, I think I've got that. And sorry, that big beadshop.com thing came up, so that'll move in just a second there. Sorry about that, but we've got this going on. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe we can get Karen to bring Alfred out. I don't know. Maybe if I ask her really nicely. She's so busy doing her webmaster stuff, I hate to bother her. But you never know. You never know. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, thank you so much for joining me for this free tip Friday. Um, I hope you... Uh, I really love how this looks and how it looks um, with the stack. I think it's really fun. Um, again, I'd love to see your creations. Post them over at the bead table. It's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a really fun one for you guys to experiment with. So next week we're going to continue on this nodding uh, odyssey here, or this nodding journey, really. We're going to talk about um, poetry, and we're calling this one the travel poetry. So it's a little twist on our regular poetry project, which I think you guys are going to love. And then next Friday, for next week's Free Tip Friday, I'm going to have a special guest. No, it's not Janice. No, it's not Emily. No, it's not Karen. 
I think you guys are going to be super stoked to see who it is. Alrighty. Well, have a fantastic weekend, everybody. I think Alfred's taking a nap, so never um, wake sleeping kitties, right? Let them, let them relax. All right, you guys, I will see you next week on Facebook Live. Have a fantastic weekend. Stay creative, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.